attempt trying to record this video. Uh, QuickTime made some changes and I haven't done this in a while so hopefully everything works now the audio is recording. Uh, I woke up thinking about the fires, wildfires in California. Um, it seems to be a recurring event on a yearly basis and um, historically when I've looked at the data set some of the trends have emerged with respect to how the climate may be changing. Uh, I could be wrong, so I want to be challenged here. But one of the pieces I picked up was this um, study by NASA about mega droughts in the southwestern uh, region and the central plains. This is predicted, so this may not be happening right now. But the other is about uh, Uh, California weather time period. So it looks like California may actually be going uh, through a wet era. Uh, historically, California is a desert. So that's that's really it. Uh, I remember reading this article uh, on the New York Times. And um, the, when the dry spell happens in California, historically, it lasts a long time. So, yeah, you know, this like this is an article on the New York Times. So they've got data from the past. Uh, I don't even know how long this is. Uh, two mega droughts that lasted longer than 100 years. So we're looking at like a 1400 time scale here for this study. And this can this was done by looking at the tree rings. Okay, so again, when the droughts happen, they usually happen in the region and they last for a really long time. So with the migrations into North America, um, the climate that California in general has experienced could be a relatively good time for humans in, in that region. And like we have to look at the data and what does the data suggest? So the NASA, this is one of the studies, there are other studies too, but um, you know, like NASA's predicting like mega droughts for uh, the West, and then this one is, I guess, more recent. Um, so I just kind of I, I searched for mega drought NASA, and I clicked on. I didn't check this. Oh, there's actually a tool. Oh, there's a visualization tool. Okay. So you can download some of these videos, I guess. Um, anyway, so I'll go back here. So when I go to this study, so again, the data is collected using data from tree rings. And in case you are wondering what that means, it literally means tree rings. So when you look at tree trunks, there are rings inside the tree trunks, these concentric circles. And if you know how to read these circles, they depict what kind of climate the trees experienced whether they got more rainfall that year, less rainfall, and you can kind of tell by looking at some of these rings. So then what I'm assuming NASA did was they had some kind of machine vision, uh, kind of neural network, look at these tree rings. Uh, so like some computer vision 
I'm assuming, I'm not sure, right? So NASA would have then looked at this. I don't know if I can use these images, but NASA would have done basically what I'm about to see. They would have, that is not what I'm searching for. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they would have used some kind of machine vision to be able to make sense out of this hundreds of years of data and then it would have kind of gone from there, right? Come on. The other uh, indicator was precipitation or soil moisture. And then using these two indicators, at least two set of scenarios were established. One was uh, looking at the carbon emissions and if we don't make any cuts, and what the impact would be with respect to soil moisture and um, um, the data from the tree rings. And the other scenario was when there is moderate cuts to the emission or like moderate emissions. And it would be interesting to see if there were zero carbon what the impact to the climate would be. We have to appreciate that this model, as interesting as it is, does not factor data from like the fluid dynamic nature of the ocean currents and the wind patterns and a whole host of other activities that could impact this very model, right? So this model, as awesome it is, it, it is, and we need more models like this, it is doesn't it, like, encapsulate or capture the true dynamic nature of what's really going on in the climate. And I think you need like a couple of other things for that, most notably the ability to be able to have that data set in the first place, and then to be able to crunch that data and model that data in simulation. So maybe we can do that with quantum computers, or maybe we need a new form of computation for that. Uh, maybe like a reversible co computation or I don't know something else or maybe we can just do that with classical comp computers and have Elon Musk build some gigafactories to be able to power some of these computers but we need to model the the uh, in, the the dynamics of like the complicated ways that the climate performs and run different simulations to be able to see what could happen and based on the projections we should be ready so yeah this is this is the study and these are the predictions so we are this has some historic data uh and again like i said this is my fourth or fifth attempt at trying to make this video so if i go here oh, let me try this again so we're kind of like here right now. Let me maximize this. We are here right now and it starts getting more dry as more time passes by. So this is like 10, 12 years out. And already we are starting to see the impact. And 20 years out, it starts getting more dry. And arid and we're not even like 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 obviously the study only says US but like looks like parts of Mexico are getting pretty dry this is business as usual no emission cuts this is moderate cuts so we're, we're gonna start like so that's one thing right some of these things could happen much faster based on what I just shared so not in terms of panic or anything, but I think we should be prepared. And yeah, so that's the NASA study. I have no idea what just happened to that tab. So yeah, I'm just thinking of like some of the innovations that are going to be required right now. So uh, let's talk about this in a step-by-step -step format. So if this is the actual population or representative of the population of California, 
although this actual image is 19 years old because it's from the 2000 uh, census data. It was census from the year 2000. But I would be surprised that actually the population spread is pretty much kind of looks like this. So you have more population living in specific parts of California versus others. And then you've got like these really scattered population all over. Uh, but in terms of population per square mile, uh, with more than 5,000 people living per square mile, most of the population would be centered around the urban landscape. So what you can then have is a tool which has different layers. Obviously, it's going to have a layer of population. Then there's going to be data with respect to the wildfires and the reach of those wildfires, and that would be the other layer. And then you'd kind of be able to map that historically and maybe run some predictions about the future. Uh, you can kind of do that kind of stuff with models today or the kind of data science tools that we have today. And then you could have like other tools with respect to uh, maybe like satellite data. Uh, we're going to be pushing like a, not, a lot of nano satellites in the space uh, or in the orbit. So maybe you could have like uh, meter by meter uh, per square meter kind of uh, uh, like feeds coming in from orbit and then you could just ingest that data and uh, run a computation like you just kind of let neural networks lose on it you know you'll see if a pattern is emerging with respect to like smoke fire and that would be like one way of like being more kind of prepared as opposed to being reactive which seems to be like the case right now, like the fire happens and then we send some, like there's response, right? Uh, like forest fire or like fire brigades or something like that, a combination of. So like, like the tool would be the first innovation, one of the first. Uh, other innovations would include, but not be limited to, like we mostly send, uh, I have no idea who makes these. I just search for upright drones uh, so imagine like if there was a fire brigade of the future where you have it's like slightly elongated with a little bit more real estate and then you have these drones parked at the back and what these drones do is basically suck up the water from the tank and they go and put the water out or put the fire out where it's needed the most so you can have like algorithms that uh, I should I couldn't find like images that were not labeled for reuse and it looks like most of these are military but there's there's comfort like Tariq from Air Vinci was making an upright uh, 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 drone this is this is Tariq's drone I don't want to promote specific teams but um, yeah, you could have like something like this without man flight, just like you could have like just sucking up water and just again, putting it out like where, uh, it's needed the most. So if you've got like a large inferno, you don't want to send humans there, send the machine and machines can do that job much more effectively and the humans can assist and put out some of those smaller fires and wrap everything up and you know be more safe and more secure and get the job done so there are a lot of innovations like this that can be brought about um, flying the drones like too far inland would probably not make a lot of sense uh, but there are other ideas that you can consider but um, yeah, I'll, I'll get to like the re kind of conf like I think we need to rethink how cities are designed uh, especially if things are getting more drier, the sea level, the sea levels are rising. Most of the population lived on the coastal. It's just a larger debate. But um, yeah, it's like one like the, so the tool is one idea. Innovation with respect to how the fires actually put out is another set of ideas. And uh, the, I guess it kind of just kind of building up on that level. I think there's gonna come a time. At some point, I don't know when, you know, it's all continued on how like the predictions and the models play out, but there will come a time when we will have to think about re, uh, like basically moving humans from 
how we are spread out right now to it's still going to be spread out but it's not going to be spread out all over the world so this is going to be a huge political uh, kind of debate uh, maybe not but I think if the sea level rise continues happening and if things keep changing and if they change uh, a lot more faster than we anticipate, then these conversations, conversations like the one I'm about to say, will start happening. Uh, if, like, things are relatively stable, and then, you know, like, we're, we're definitely going to see, like, colonies come up on Mars, Venus, in orbit, potentially other habitats. So, you know, then there's going to be, like, people moving to some of these newer worlds. Uh... And at that time, too, the conversation may come up that now that, you know, the population has stabilized and th then there's going to be an actual decrease of population on Earth. So either way, whether the climate changes or the other scenario that I just explained or both, um, this conversation about how cities should be designed will come up at some point. So this is a little far out. Maybe depends, you know, like how things change. It could be like 10 years out, 20 years out, 30 years out. But we'll have to start thinking about how all of us live on this one part of the Earth. And if this represents all of the landmass of Earth, it's a really terrible drawing. Then we, if humans are kind of like, I'll represent with some other random color that can be noticeable on the map. So if humans are kind of like, humans are really like spread out, right? So if these were like, say, each, each one of these dots represents like 100 million people and we don't have a city that big. So there's like a couple of cities come together. Like, so humans would be kind of like spread out and the math obviously doesn't add up here. So humans are more spread out than we are like so this it, it like when you look at the data like this it makes it looks like we are condensed in city in cities but i think we're more spread out than we are concentrated and i'm not saying put all the people in one tiny area which would be an absolute disaster if something were to happen to that region uh but like it's going to it's kinda, what's going to happen in the future is the four parts the the one fourth of the total surface or the area is then going to be divided into four areas at the very least and then out of those out of one of those regions humans will habitate or be living in just like a tiny fraction of that area so cities will have to be redesigned completely different differently when that happens so that's a longer debate uh that debate also kind of includes how some of these other technologies are going to come online. We're going to have more computation available, potentially new ways to be able to manufacture things, potentially a post-care city society, so we wouldn't need as much land mass to be able to grow our food uh, and not do agricultural through the means that we do it today. And a lot of other breakthroughs, innovation like this, like the Hyperloop network would be built. We'd have like one-hour flights from one part of the world to the other. So... Long story short, we won't need as much land mass. And that's where we're heading towards in the future. And that's going to make like jobs like primary response, first responder, uh, some of the other things a lot more manageable uh, as well. And we're going to end up saving more human lives. And, you know, three parts of the earth, land mass is going to be reserved for nature itself in its untamed format. Uh, that isn't domesticated yet and the, whatever like stuff can happen there however it happens unless there's some like super crazy thing that happens like a volcano erupts that just keeps erupting and we need to plug it or something like that but other than that um that's the long term uh i guess some i don't know if it's an accurate forecast this is the kind of thing you'd have to look at but just to recap uh start building and creating tools that are able to better model the predictive nature of some of somehow some of these disasters are occurring would be a good step 
uh, I spoke about the innovations that may be required with respect to putting machines at the forefront of tackling some of these inf like uh, disasters. Spe specific to this example, upright drones that just kind of suck up the water from the tanks or some module to be able to transfer the water into them and they come back and replenish and they are at the forefront of tackling these fires. And you, you do it in a very safe way that these things stay away from humans. Uh, they can detect like biological tissue or something and at the same time work alongside first responders and uh, the fire department to be able to take the lead when it comes to taking the, the brunt of the, f the fire up front and then humans assist with wrapping up and cleaning up and uh, just kind of you know make sure uh, everything is taken care of before they call it a day. And uh, the third and the larger discussion is respect to how the population is mostly spread out and how in the future we'd have to redesign cities in order to be able to work around some of the problems that have been explained. Most noticeably in with context to this video, the drying and the drought conditions that may become prevalent and the fires that may happen as well, I briefly touch based on the nature of rising sea levels. So if you saw this video, thanks for watching. I haven't made videos in a while, been super busy with my startup and just taking care of myself. And uh, if you think this was useful and would like help with some ideation, if you're making a drone or some tool or to be able to innovate in this area or an associated area, please do reach out to me. My email can be easily found on the interweb and uh, I would love to help out in my capacity. Thanks for watching. Feel free to reach out and have a nice